so this is going to be objective 20. We are going to simplify radicals. And when I'm talking about a radical, I'm talking about a, what's a radical? I'm talking about a square root. Okay, I'm talking about a square root. And I do want you to understand that we are going to, we're going to focus primarily from now on square roots and make sure you're really good at square roots. But sometime between now and the SOL, we've got to discuss cube roots. And I want you to understand that there are other things by, they're like fourth roots and there are fifth roots and there are six roots and there are seventh roots. Okay, I do want you to understand there are other things besides square roots. There are cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots. In Algebra 1, we're only going to discuss square roots and cube roots. Okay, now when you get into Algebra 2, you'll discuss fourth roots, fifth roots, sixth roots, seventh roots, eighth roots, so forth and so on. Okay, um, how do you know it's a square root when there's no number? It's kind of like the square root's the most popular. So when there is no number, you understand it to be a square root. If it's another root, like a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root, it will have a number in the sign. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so for right now, we are going to be talking about square roots. And to simplify our square roots, we need to have the perfect squares list one more time. So ready, set, go. Hold on, 169. <laughs> Let him do all the hard work. Okay, there's your list. I will tell you, you know how, like, don't we love it in English class when you have a word bank or history class or whatever class when you have a word bank to choose from? Yes? Here is your number bank. So you are going to want this bank at the top of every worksheet, at the top of every classwork, at the top of every quiz, at the top of every test, at the top of every SOL. You know, you're going to want this list at the top of your page because it's what you're going to use to choose from to simplify these radicals. Okay, if you don't have it in front of you, it makes it harder, right? So please, if you don't know these, you need to get to know these, you need to have these memorized, and they need to be written at the top of every page that we have, okay? It is your number bank to choose from. So... Um, so, um, we're going to start with example one, and we're going to simplify the square root of 18. Now, how many of you, as of right now, you want to take square root of 18 and you want to put it in your calculator? So try it. Put it in your calculator. Put in the square root of 18. Hmm? Very good. Harvey says, he's not looking at a calculator. Harvey says it's four decimal something. How did you know it was four decimal something? We've discussed this this year already. Four times four is 16. And five times five is 25. And so 18 is between 16 and 25. So it's going to be four point something. And it's what kind of number? Is it rational or is it irrational? Irrational. It's a four point some, 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 some. A non terminating, non repeating decimal. That is an irrational number. Okay, now here's the thing. Let's kind of refer back to um, simplifying fractions. We all understand how to simplify 
a fraction, right? If I give you 3 6 and I say simplify that, you do what to it? Divide it by 3 and make it 1 half. Why didn't you make it a decimal? Couldn't you? Couldn't you? You could. Similarly, we could take the square root of 18 and make it a decimal. You just did it in your calculator. But when I say simplify, I don't mean change forms. I mean leave it in the same form. Leave it in fraction form, but make it smaller, right? You understand that? That's how, like, I mean, you knew not to take it and make it a decimal. When I said simplify that fraction, it means keep it in fraction form, but use smaller numbers to be the same thing. Okay, that's what we're going to do with the square root of 18. We're going to keep it in radical form. You follow? We're just going to break it into smaller numbers. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to take the perfect square out of it. Okay, so I want to take 18 and I want to find a number from my list that's a perfect square that divides into 18 evenly. 9. 9 times what? 2. So we're going to break this down into 9 times 2. Okay? Can we take the square root of one of those numbers? Yeah, we can take the square root of 9. And when we take the square root of it, I want you to kind of imagine it. We talk about the magic mirror a lot or whatever. I want you to imagine this 9. It's going to come through the radical and when it comes to the outside it come becomes a the square root of 9 it becomes a 3 okay you take the square root of it it's going to travel to the outside so i want you to imagine remember we talked about like a um, the magic mirror when it steps through the radical it changes Okay, does that make sense? When it comes outside the radical, you take the square root of it, it becomes 3, and then we're going to just leave the 2 underneath. So your final answer will be 3 times the square root of 2. Okay? You did put in the square root of 18 in your calculator, right? You got it? Everybody got the square root of 18 in their calculator? I now want you to put in 3 times the square root of 2. Because that's what it said. There's no sign there, right? So it's multiplication. 3 times the square root of 2. Why is it the same thing? Because it's equal but just in it. it's simplified, right? It's simplified. Okay, same thing, 3, 6. If you put in 3, 6 in your calculator and you put in 1 half in your calculator, you get the same thing. It is equal but simplified. So same thing here. We have just simplified it. Okay, so 3 times the square root of 2. Let's look at square root of 24. Look at your list and tell me which perfect square goes into 24. Four. Why don't I use like four times six? Everybody agree? I'm going to break it apart into 4 times 6. Why don't I use, um, I'm just thinking, why don't I use 12 times 2 or 8 times 3? I need, the whole thing of this is, is I'm going to find one that's a perfect square and I'm going to take the perfect square out of it. Okay, does that make sense? And make it smaller. So, 12 and 2 are not perfect. Neither is 3 and 8. Okay, I'm using 4 and 6 because 4 is on the list. Okay, one of the numbers, they don't both have to be on the list, but one of them has to be on the list. Okay, so which one can I circle? The 4, and it's important, guys, that you do circle. These are going to get quite a bit larger when I start adding in variables here in a minute. And I don't think first block was um, prepared for that. It's like I started adding in the variables, and they're like, Miss Corns, you said this was going to be easier, and this is not easier. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. And it's, they weren't doing what I'm doing. So as I'm starting with the baby ones, make sure you're circling with me, okay? Drawing arrows with me. Underlining what's left under the radical with me. Following along, okay? And after I said, whoa, 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 wait, and they started writing it with me, they're like, 
I totally thought it was like so much harder than it is. And they're like, I retract my statement, Ms. Cordes. I said, thank you very much. Okay, so when we take the 4 out, it, we got to take the square root of it in order to get it out. Does that make sense? Okay, so to take the square root of 4, what comes to the outside? The 2, what's left on the inside? A 6. Now, couldn't 6 break down again? Like 2 times 3? But neither 2 nor 3 are perfect. So, look at your list. Can, can your, any of your numbers on your list go into 6? So, 6 is as far as it can go. Okay, so your answer is... 2 times the square root of 6. Okay, what's a good way to check yourself? Put in the square root of 24 in your calculator. Get a decimal. Put in 2 times the square root of 6 into your calculator. Get a decimal. Make sure that they are the same. Okay, that is, that is a good way to check. How about you try this one on your own? Find me a number on your list, and instead of staring at it, guys, what should you be doing? 48 divided by 4. 48 divided by 9. 48 divided by 16. You need to start dividing by numbers on your list. Does that make sense? Did everybody find a number that goes into 48? Can someone share with me what you broke 48 down into? Because I'm hoping I get two different answers. Okay. 16 times 3. That's one option. Colby, can you give me another? Mm, why wouldn't I use 6 and 8? Neither one of them are perfect. They're not. You got to use numbers from the list. Somebody have another option that was on the list because it's important. Four and twelve, so good. And four, four is on the list. Sixteen is on the list. So here is a good discussion to have, and this problem has purpose. Okay. Probably the number one mistake happens when you do something like this. Okay. When we simplify. Fractions. What's the best option to only be able to only have to divide one time? You want to get the biggest number that divides into it. And so if you get the biggest number, you only have to do it once. What happens if you don't get the biggest? You gotta divide again and again and again and again until it gets all the way simplified. Does that make sense? Yes. So looking at, look at our perfect squares. What are our perfect squares? 16 and the 4. So which one's the biggest? So which one's the best option? The 16. So 16, the, the black one that I've done up here, you're only going to have to do it one time. And then I, I do want to work the red one so that you can see. You can get to the answer by that, but you're going to have to do it a couple of times. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the thing. When you're sitting there and you're going, like, you're going to have numbers like, I don't know, um, 512. And everybody goes, I don't know what goes into 512. So, should you start, you need to take 512 and start dividing by numbers on your list. What would be the smart place to start? If I had 512, should I start at 4? and 9, and 16, and 25? Or should I start maybe up with the larger numbers? You want to start for the large numbers. I always use the um, analogy of a fishing tournament. Am I into fishing? Aspire to be on the state award-winning fishing team? No? Okay. Well, anyway, 
if you're on the fishing team and you're in a fishing tournament, does everybody understand the concept of a fishing tournament? To go out there and get the biggest fish. And so that's what we're going to do. Would it be benefit you to go out there and go out there and catch? Ooh, I caught one, but it's itty bitty. I caught one. It's itty bitty. I caught one. Would it? Would, is that helping you? No. You want to go out there, and within the first ten minutes, you want to catch the biggest fish you got, and then you can say, "Y'all cannot stop over there because I won. I got the big one." Does that make sense? So here's the thing: when you start dividing, if I had five twelve, looking at my list, what might be a good place to start dividing by five twelve? 512 divided by, go big, I, I'd go bigger. I would say if I had 512, I'd go bigger. You know that 324 won't go into 512. Because if you divide 500 in half, you're going to have what? 256. So I might would start somewhere around 256. You with me? I do 512 divided by 256. 512 divided by 225. 512 divided by 196. 512 divided by 169. And work your way down in order to catch the biggest fish. That's the key. If you want to be the best fisherman of simplifying radicals, you want to go catch the biggest fish on the first get-go. Okay? And then you only got to do it one time. Okay, so let's look. This is our best option, 16 times 3. 16 is perfect. When it comes out, it comes out as a 4 times the square root of 3. And that is our final answer. Someone said, well, Ms. Corn's 4 is perfect. Can't you make that a 2? Everybody agree? Some, you might want to keep going and make the 4 a, a 2 because square root of 4 is 2. But here's the thing. I want you to imagine, me and my analogies, imagine a radical like a jail cell. Okay? When you are under the radical, you have to do what it says to do. Right now, this says to take the square root of 4 and to take the square root of 12. You follow? It's telling me what to do. You're in jail. You've got to eat when they say eat. You've got to work when they say work. You've got to sleep when they say sleep. You with me? But once you break free and you go to the outside, you're free. You don't have to do what they say to do. You with me? There's nothing out here that says take the square root of 4. It just says 4. And it's just on the outside by itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? So once it's on the outside, you leave it alone. Like, for example, what if I had the square root of 81? We all know the square root of 81 is... Nine. And everybody says, but couldn't that go down to a three? Is there anything up there that's telling me to take the square root of nine? No, it's free. Don't mess with it. You with me? There's nothing up there telling me to take the square root of it. So once it comes to the outside, it's done. Okay? The only time you can simplify it more if it is still in jail. And it's telling you what to do. Does that make sense? If it's still on the inside. I don't know where I come up with these things. That's a new one for me, too. I just made it up this morning. It's pretty good, right? No? Okay. All right. So, just so you know, too, Colby gave me a big compliment this morning. He said, I'm going to stay in here with Miss Corns because it's cool in here. I said, Colby! He said, yeah, that's all you're getting. And then he left. I said, yes! Anyway. Okay. When you take the four out... The square root of 4 is 2. Can someone tell me why? This is the correct answer over here. 4 times square root of 3. Can you tell me why this guy is not? It's not in simple form. Remember, you can go, because I didn't get the biggest on this one, you'd have to go again. Is there a number on our list that can go into 12? You don't want 6 and 2. They're not on the list. You want 4 and 3. 4 is on the list. So when the 4 comes out, what does it come out as? A 2. What do you do with the 2 on the outside? You multiply them, what's left on the inside. And see, now they match. So this guy, he just had to go twice. Okay? What's the best option? 
go get the biggest, okay? Go get the biggest. That's your best option. You only have to do it one time, okay? So, let's take a look at this one. I'm going to let you try it on your own. Um, I will tell you, everybody says, what do I do with that three, Miss Goins? We just talked about that. Whenever I break it down and I take the perfect square out, what do I do with the perfect square and the three? You just multiply, okay? And let me help you out with 400 or 450. Look at your list. 450 divided by, well, it's a great place to start. I would start at 256 or 225 or somewhere around there and get your biggest, okay? And work your way down from there. So, see what you can do on this one. Does anyone want to share their answer? Go, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. 225 times 2. Good. You break it apart. Kind of like a factor tree. Okay? Does that make sense? Was it this class or another class? Someone, when I was doing the factor trees the other day, they went, Oh, I missed those so much. Nobody in this class? Okay. Some, somebody liked those in one of my classes, I can't remember. But you have to break it down into something times something. Very good. And one of those somethings must be perfect. Okay? Then? Uh-huh. Very good. What does it come out as? Does it come out as a 225? In order to take it out, here's the thing. If it's in jail, here's a new one for me. You ready? I'm going to make it up right now. Okay, if it's in jail and it's coming out, it just can't come out normal. It's got to have a special ticket to get to the outside. You with me? What's the special <laughs> disguise? What's the special ticket of taking a perfect square to the outside? The special ticket is you got to do something to it. What is it? You got to take the square root. Does that make sense? That's the ticket. Okay, you got to take the square root of it. So what should it come out as? It should come out as a 15. So, 45 on the outside. What's left on the inside? 2. So, the answer should be 45 times the square root of 2. Okay, very good, though. Okay, any questions? How many were able to get that? Or get at least part of the way there-ish? Okay. All right, before we move on into variables... Okay, the variables is where I kind of, first block kind of lost it on me, and they were like, this is so hard. So before we get there, let's, I'm going to do just a couple more, just to make sure you're good with this, before I kind of add the variables in. So I want you to try, um, let's do negative 2 times the square root of 98. Try that. Brandon, can you tell me anything about this problem? Okay, he broke 49, 98 down into 49 times 2. My question is to you, Brandon, did you start doing 98? Some people start dividing 98 divided by 2, 98 divided by 3, 98 divided by 4, 98 divided by 5. Does that help us? We need to make sure that we were dividing by numbers where? On the list. Does that make sense? Because those are the numbers we're trying to get to go into 98. Okay, did you start at 4 and 9 and 16, or did you start, where did you start when you divided 98? You started right at 49, and that's great. Okay, how many were able to start right at 49? Okay, and that's great. Anybody start somewhere different? Where did you start, Harvey? 16? Just, I would be careful, I'd shoot bigger. Does that make sense? I'd shoot, shoot for the biggest, um, because occasionally what happens when you start in that area? You might catch a small fish and that ain't going to help you. Does that make sense? So really try to shoot for the biggest possible. Okay. In this case, there's only one, one of them that goes into it, and that's 49. 
So, Brandon, when the 49 comes out, comes out as what? What's its ticket to get out? It comes out as a 7. Yeah, it's change. Okay. And so, what's on the outside? What do you do with the 7 and the negative 2? You times them and get what, Lucy? Negative 14 times the square root of 2. Very good. Negative 14 times the square root of 2. How many were able to get that? Okay. One more real quick, then we'll move on to some variables. So how about this negative square root of 72? Okay. Never says, I don't know what to do with that negative, Miss Gorns. Somebody shed some light on that negative for me. It's a negative 1, right? There's always a number somewhere. Where, what is it? It's a 1. So this is a negative 1, not to be confused with anything. Okay. Option A, option B. See which one you picked. Who wants to tell me what you broke it down into? Tanner, what you got? What, what do we take? I agree, sort of. What did you break 72 down into? 36 times 2. That's one option. Option B. I don't think 16 times 4 works. What's a common thing? People look at 72 and they go 9 and 8. Did anybody going to tell me they use 9 and 8? I had a couple. I had several that used 9 and 8. So here's my thought. Look at your perfect squares. We got a perfect square of 36. We got a perfect square of 9. If I'm fishing, which one do I want for the big money? I want the biggest one. This is the best, best option, okay, because it's bigger than 9. And I caution you because, again, this is a common factors of 72, 9 and 8. And so people automatically think 9 and 8. Ooh, 9. Nine's perfect, so 9 and 8. Okay, I will tell you what happens when you pick 9. This is a negative 1. When the 9 comes out, you get a 3, and you get negative 3 times square root of 8, and everybody says, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And you get your paper back, and it's a 64. Okay, and you're like, but I did it right. Uh-uh, what's wrong with it? It ain't the biggest, so what do you know? I mean, you did it correctly, but what's... It could go again. And it's fine to choose 9 and 8 as long as you're willing to simplify it twice. Anybody ever taken a fraction and you didn't know what went into it? It was even, so you started with 2. And you broke it down and made it small. And then you went again. And you went again. Is it okay to do it that way? I mean, it gets you to the right answer, but you have to be willing to go again. So what can 8 break down into? What times what? 4 times 2, and what's the 4 ticket to get out of jail? It's a 2, so negative 6 times the square root of 2. That's your final answer. And how do I know 2 can't be broken down again? Because there's nothing on the list that can go into 2. And everybody says, but 1 can. I will tell you this. I always put 1 on the list, but are we ever going to simplify by 1? No, because you'll see it'll be left with a 2. Okay. Um, 36 is the best option to only do it once. When the 36 comes out, its ticket to get out of jail is a 6. So when it gets out, it's a negative 6 times the square root of 2, and you're done. Does that make sense? Okay, so I caution you. Make sure you go get the biggest to begin with. Okay? All right. Let's go to variables. First block told me to please make sure I tell all my other classes that this particular page may overwhelm you. Warning, this particular page may overwhelm you, but have no fear, it will get better. Okay, 
I'm going to put a lot of variables up there. I'm going to simplify the square root of x, the square root of x squared, the square root of x cubed. I'm going to go all the way up to the x to the tenth. And I'm going to work each one out so that you understand there's a pattern that's going to be forming. But there's going to be variables all over the page. Okay? There is a pattern forming. So see if you can find the pattern for me. But have no fear. After this page... That's when they raised their hand and said, Miss Corns, you lied. You told us this was going to be easy. And it is not easy. But then we did example five, and they were fine. Okay, so it will get better. Do y'all like my warning? Warning! Beep, beep, beep. I should, like, be able to insert something on my PowerPoints, like, you know, a big warning, you know, that they do, like, on a commercial or something. I don't know. That'd be fun. If I was a cool teacher, I'd do that, but... Since I'm not, <laughs> I'll just stick here. All right. Tell me about the square root of x. Is x perfect? What times what is x? The same number times the same number. It's got to be the same thing times same thing. x and 1 are not same. What times what same thing is x? Nothing. Somebody in, earlier said x times x, and I heard it in here, x times x. But that's not x. x times x is not x. x times x is x squared. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, x can't be broken down any further. Okay? And it's not perfect. So when you get the square root of x, there's nothing you can do with it. It is as low as it can go. Kind of reminds me of like square root of 2. Can you break down 2? No. You, square root of 2 stays square root of 2. You can't do anything with it. Okay? Let's go square root of x squared. Is x squared perfect? Yes. What times what is x squared? x times x. So here's the thing. What do we do? What do we do with our numbers when they were perfect? We circled them, right? And it got a ticket to get out of jail. So... What's the ticket to get out? You've got to take the square root of it. Now, I'm going to give you a helpful hint, okay? Because we're going to get on up there into x to the 5th and x to the 6th and x to the 7th and x to the 8th. And everybody goes, I don't know the ticket to get out of jail. I don't know what to do with it when you take it out. Here's the thing. Here's a little helpful hint. If you don't know what it comes out as, you can always take it and divide it by the root. What root do we have here? A 2. This is a square root. So when it comes out, when I divide that, I get what on the outside? x to the first. And we know square root of x squared is x. x times x. So there's an x on the outside. What's left on the inside? No, nope. I circled this guy and took him out. There is a 1, but square root of 1 is 1. And x times 1 is 1 is x. You with me? So here's what I'm going to hear to tell you. If you have the square root of 9, when the 9 comes out, it comes out as a 3. What's left on the inside? There is a 1. You with me? But square root of 1 is 1. And 3 times 1 is 3. So it's just, there's nothing. Okay? There's no square root. So when you take everything to the outside, there's nothing left on the inside other than a 1. Okay? And 1 times x is just x. If it's the square root of x squared, let's go square root of x cubed. Okay? Is the square root of x cubed perfect? No. So what do we do when something's not perfect? What do we do with 18? We took it and we broke it into something that was perfect, right? Something times something, and one of them was perfect. And because it was perfect, it got a ticket out of jail, right? Okay, so you took it out. So, can you give me a variable, something times something, that one of them's perfect? Tanner. X times... Almost, almost... Help her out. She's totally thinking x squared times x. Does everybody agree that x squared times x is x cubed? So it works. Which one's perfect? Which one gets a ticket out of jail? D 
the x squared gets the ticket out, you can divide it by 2. Does that make sense? You can divide it by the root to get it out. So what's on the outside? When you, an x, the square root of x squared is an x on the outside. What's left on the inside? Now this time we have something. What can I underline? The x. So this is x times the square root of x. Okay. Breathe. It's going to be okay. Let's take a look at the square root of x to the fourth. Is it perfect? What times what is x to the fourth? x squared times x squared. Because when you multiply powers, we add the exponents. Okay? So, we can circle him. He gets a ticket out. So, what comes to the outside? x squared on the outside, what's left? What can I underline? Do I have anything that I can underline? No, so what's left on the inside? A 1, but 1 times x squared is x squared. So, nothing, no square root symbols. Okay? And everybody says, Miss Corns, can't you break down x squared in the square root of x squared? x? Couldn't I take x squared and make x? Can somebody tell me not? why not with my crazy analogies? He's out! He's free! There's nothing there telling me to take the square root of him. You with me? Now, if I had the square root of x squared, the square root of x squared is x. But there's nothing there telling me to take the square root. He's free. He's out. Don't mess with him. Does that make sense? Once you go to the outside, you can't do anything with him. So leave him x squared. Okay? How about x to the fifth? Okay, let's look at option A and option B. What's the key? If I want to be the best fisherman, I've got to go get what? i got to go get the biggest one. Hmm. I hear option A, x squared times x cubed. Everybody agree? x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. Because we're adding the exponents when you multiply them. Okay. Option B x to the fourth times x. Does that give you 5, 2? Look, ones are perfect. Which one's the biggest fish? x to the fourth. This guy's the best. Okay, he's the biggest. Okay, when he comes out, x squared on the outside, what's left on the inside? x. Awesome. Okay, does everybody understand? What's wrong with this guy? Why is this guy not good? Because he's green. Okay. Well, he's not the biggest. X squared is perfect. Okay, what does X squared come out as? An X, tell me about X cubed. Can it go again into what times what? X squared times X, and X squared can come out as a X. What do I do with those two guys? X times X is x squared, and what's left on the inside? You get there, but you had to go a couple times. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, how many of you are you're like, I don't like this doing it twice thing. I want to get the biggest one, right? Okay, so what's the concept here? What's the relationship between, we had x to the fifth, and the best one to use, we broke it down into x to the fourth times x. So can somebody tell me the relationship between what do I need to use to get the biggest? Well, it is always x to some kind, but how do you know the biggest one? It's one below. I call this my one less rule. The best one, if it's, if it's x to the fifth, the best one to use to break it down into is x to the fourth times x. Okay. Have you decided yet which ones are perfect? Which ones are perfect? the even ones. Which ones do you need to break down using the one less rule? The odd ones. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Is everybody okay? Anybody with force block right now in their comment? Ms. Corrin, you lied. You said this was easy. Everybody okay? <laughs> it will get, this is Kind of overwhelming. It will get better on the next example, I promise. But let's do a couple more of these. Let's look at x to the 6. Okay, is it perfect? Harvey just told us which ones are perfect. The even ones. It is perfect. Okay, 
So, we can circle it. He's perfect. He's been a good boy. He gets a ticket out of jail. What does he come out as? X cubed. And everybody says, does everybody understand? X to the third times X to the third is X to the sixth. Because when you multiply powers, you add the exponents. So it's really, and if you don't know what to take it out as, what did I tell you you could do? You could take it and divide it by, divide it by its root. What root is it? It's a square root. So you divide it by 2. You can divide them by 2. So 6 divided by 2, it comes out as an x cubed. Does that make sense? What's on the inside? Or, yeah, what's left on the inside? Nothing. There's nothing to underline. Okay? This guy got to took it out. He's free. He's out. There's nothing left in jail. Okay? How about x to the 7th? Is he perfect? No. Let's use my one less rule. What do I break him down into, Brandon? One less than seven? One less than seven? Six times x. Always one less than the exponent. Does that make sense? Okay, which one's perfect? X to the six is perfect. X to the six can come out as x to the third on the outside. What's left on the inside? An x. So x to the third times square root of x. Okay. You done? Okay, I'll get it in a second. Um, how about x to the eighth? Just a couple more. Is it perfect? Yes. Harvey just told us. Which ones are perfect? Thank you. The even ones. So I can circle him. I can take him out. What does he come out as? X to the fourth. What's left on the inside? Nothing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because what did I say? You could take it and divide it by two. The and the reason why I say divide it by its root, because what if it's a cube root? What would you divide it by? Three. You with me to take it out? What if it's a fourth root? What would you divide it by? Four. What if it's a fifth root? You would divide it by five. You with me? You can divide it by its root, which is a square root in this case. And divide it by 2. Okay? So, last one for right now. X to the ninth. Is it perfect? No. So what do I break it down into? And everybody says, Miss Corns, why don't I use 4 and 5? X to the fourth is perfect. Why don't I use 4 and 5? X to the 8th is perfect, and X to the 8th is bigger than X to the 4th. You want the biggest. So when X to the 8th comes out, it comes out as a X to the 4th divided by 2 times the square root of X. Okay, how many actually followed me on this? Okay, and it got better. Had I not done like a thousand of these, they wouldn't have gotten better, right? So I had to kind of work my way through them. So, this is what your SOL is going to look like. Okay. Do not be alarmed. It's not that hard. We're going to take our numbers with our numbers and our x's with our x's and our y's with our y's and our z's with our z's. We're going to take each piece at a time. So on step one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, if things are perfect, you ever heard the saying, if something is perfect, don't break it. Okay? I think there's a better saying. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. But along the same lines, if it's perfect, don't break it. Don't mess it up. You with me? If it's perfect the way it is, don't do anything. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If something up here is perfect, we're not going to break it apart. We're just going to drop it down. It's, it's beautiful like it is. You with me? It's perfect. Everybody understand that? If it's not perfect, then we got to fix it. Okay, and so if it's not perfect, we need to break it into something times something that is perfect. You with me? If it's not perfect, we got to make it perfect. Okay, so let's start with 108. So all I'm going to do is step one. I'm not taking anything out. I'm not circling. I'm just fixing what needs fixing. Tell me about 108. Is it perfect? No. So I need to break it and, and make it perfect. Find me a perfect square that goes into 108. Use your list. 
Be sure of it. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Make sure you go fishing for the biggest to begin with. Please don't be dividing by 4 and 9 and 16. You need to start up top. You with me? If you start down below, you're going to sit there and catch all the small fish, and that ain't going to help you a bit. You need to go out there and be a great fisherman. Go catch the biggest. Okay, What's it, what is the biggest? 36 times 3. Okay, 36 times 3. Okay, how about x squared? Is it perfect? Sure is, don't break it. It's perfect. It's beautiful like it is. Just drop it down. Do you understand? Don't mess with it. Okay, how about y to the fifth? Is it perfect? No, we got to fix it. Use my one less rule. Y to the fourth times Y. It is always, you're going to break it. The largest perfect is going to be one less than the exponent. Okay, how about Z to the tenth? Is it perfect? Remember, Harvey told us which ones are perfect? The even ones. Z to the tenth, it's perfect. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it's perfect. Just drop it down. Okay, so step one. Here's where people... Um, get really confused on these is they try to start taking stuff out and they try to start break you with me and you're doing too much at one time. All I did on step one is I fixed what needs fixing and if it was perfect I just brought it down. That's all I did. At this point in time let's circle the things that are perfect. Who can tell me one thing that's perfect? Javier, go. 36. Tell me another, Lucy. X squared. Very good. Brandon, tell me another that's perfect. Z to the tenth. Am I finished, Jordan? Or is there any others? Y to the fourth. And because I've circled, guys, it's really easy to see what's left underneath. 3Y. It's really easy to see. What if I hadn't circled things? What if I hadn't shown my work and circled things? You know what I mean? You might lose a piece of it. But it's really easy because I've circled. So here we go. These guys get tickets out of jail. We're going to take them out. 36 comes out as a 6. X squared comes out as a X. Y to the 4th comes out as Y squared. Z to the 10th comes out as Z to the 5th. What's left underneath? 3Y. How many, when you first looked at it, you were like, oh my goodness, that's going to be hard. And now you're like, oh, that's not bad. Does that make sense? It looked a lot bigger than normal. And then they're like, sure, 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 you say that now, Miss Corns, but it's going to get harder. No, it's not. That's as hard as it gets. Okay? This is it. That's as hard as it gets. Okay? I'll go back. Two seconds. We're almost finished. We're over halfway, just so you know. Okay. How are you going to show me your work on these? By circling, drawing arrows, underlining, breaking it apart. You follow? That's, that's how you're going to show me your work on these problems. Okay. Now, what did I tell you we did on step one? I said we're not going to like take anything out yet. We're not going to, we just need to evaluate. If it's perfect, we're just going to drop it down. If it's not perfect, we need to fix it and break it apart. Okay? But evaluate your problem right now. It looks like it's all perfect. Hmm. So do I need to do the step where I break things apart and fix them? Well, if I did, what would I do? Just completely rewrite the whole problem. So I would say in this case, there's no fixing to be done. Okay, now the only time you do need to do that first step is when you have fixing that needs to be done. But in this case, what can I circle? All of it. Yeah, all of it. I can circle all of these guys. They're all perfect. What can you tell me about my answer? 
no, I'm not going to have a radical in my answer. Do you understand that? All this stuff, like, what do you call the whole thing in a jail cell? I, I wanted to say platoon, but it's not. The whole, whatever. Squad. The whole squad. They've all been good. They all get tickets out. You with me? Empty jail cell. Nobody's there. Okay? I don't know what I'm talking about at all. Completely. Okay. So when 64 comes out, what does he come out as? An 8. What do I do to those two guys? And get what? 16. When A squared comes out, it comes out as a A. When B to the 4th comes out, it comes out B squared. And C to the 6th? C to the 3rd. What's left underneath? Nothing. Your answer is 16. A. B to the 2nd. C to the third. Okay? You try this one on your own. Okay? What is that on the outside? It's a negative one. Somebody said earlier, do I need to break down 625? Does anybody want to share an answer with me? Go, Austin. Times, times the square root of XC. Anybody agree with this? You only get one taker. Anybody else have a different answer? Hannah? Times square root of XC. Okay, so somewhat close. Austin, do you want to argue your answer with Hannah? Yeah, argue it. Go. What what specifically? Like, uh, the tenth, uh, is is it x to the tenth on the inside? So when it it has to have a it can't just come out like normal, right? It's got to have something special to get out of jail, right? So what happens to happen to x to the tenth? It has to take the square root of x to the tenth coming out. So, Hannah, you want to argue back with him, or do you want to be like, do you want to concede? <laughs> I don't care. Do you agree with what they're saying? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Negative x to the fifth? So minus x to the fifth? Okay. Y to the seventh? Uh huh. Times the square root of? Okay, so I think we, we kind of all agree that it's square root of x to the. Um, I will say, so I'm guessing you took the negative 1 and tried to times it by each one of these. But when we work with our numbers and our variables, what do I always say? You do your numbers with your numbers and your x's with your x's and your y's with your y's. And so is negative 1 a number? So it would match with just the 25? Okay. So let's work it out. Okay. I do agree with my top answer here. Okay, I do agree with this. So, step one, I'm not going to circle and take anything out. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fix what needs fixing. And if it doesn't need fixing, don't break it. Don't fix it. You with me? If it's perfect, just pull it down for now. Okay, so tell me about 625. Is it perfect? Yes. Okay. X to the 11th. Is it perfect? Jared, what do I break down x to the 11th into? 
Uh-huh. Okay, how about y to the 14th? Is it perfect? Yes, so we're just going to drop it down. How about z to the 17th? Nope, it needs fixing. What do I got to fix it into? z to the 16th times z. It's always one less. If you fix it, it's one less than the exponent. Okay, so then I'm going to circle. What's perfect? 625, x to the 10th, y to the 14th, z to the 16th. So, when 625 comes out, what's its ticket to get out? Square root of 625 is 25, and so that will become negative 25. Okay, what's the ticket to get x to the 10th out? x to the fifth. And again, what's the what's the shortcut? What did I tell you you could do with 10? Divide it by 2. Divide it by the root. Okay, 10 divided by 2. y to the 14th becomes y to the 7th. z to the 16th is z to the 8th times the square root of, and again, it's really easy to see what you underline, x, z. If you had not, you might have brought down one, but may have forgotten another piece of it or something like that. Okay? Yes. What? I have to think about that one. I don't know. All right, you try that. That helps, I think. Okay. Anybody want to? So now, <laughs> anybody want to give me some answers, right or wrong? What's Colby got? 2m n 2n p to the third times the square root of say it again 14 m p did anybody get that you got more followers this time anybody that did not get that wants to give me another answer 14 n p to the third times the square root of m p. Yes? Okay. Any others? That's okay. This is what I want. 8 n p to the third times the square root of 2 p. What happened to your m? 2 MP. 2 MP? Okay. Any others? Okay. So let's see what we get. Using our list, Austin, what did you break down 56 into? I'm not, I think 16 times 4 is 64. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So, what did Lindsay use? Four times So, do we agree with four times 14? How many started up top and you worked your way all the way down and it ended up being the first one? And that's okay, because what does it tell you? Then, that's far. And how do you know you got the biggest with four? You can look at 14 can 14 be broken down further? Everybody says 2 and 7, 2 and 7, Miss Corns. But can 14 be broken down by numbers on your list? No. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, what do we know about M? That's the, this was the actual purpose of this one. What do you do when you just have an M? But it's not perfect. You can't do anything to it, right? When I told you, I said, when it gets as far as it's just an X or something like that, you can't do a thing to it. So it's going to drop down and it's going to stay down. And it's, you can't, it's not perfect. You can't take it out. It's just going to stay. Okay. What about N squared? Is it perfect? It's perfect. It's beautiful like it is. Don't break it. Just drop it down. Okay. P to the seventh. Is it perfect? No, it does need to be broken apart using the one less rule. 
1 less than 7 is P to the 6 times P. At this point in time, let's circle what's perfect. What's perfect? The 4 is perfect. N to the 2nd is perfect. P to the 6 is perfect. 4 comes out as a 2. What is a common error? Would people bring 4 out as a... Well, 2 is right. But what do they... If they're wrong, what do they bring it out as? 4. They forget to take the square root of it. Okay? So 4 has got to come out as a 2. N squared comes out as a... N... P to the 6 comes out as a P cubed times the square root of 14 MP. Gotcha. Okay, so we are going to stop. Uh, stop.